Okay, I am here with Devin from Counterpart International at Society for International Development's annual conference, and Counterpart is sponsoring this pop-up studio experience. We thank you, Devin. We thank you, Counterpart. Uh, I would love for you to introduce yourself first and tell you uh, tell the folks watching a little bit about what you do at Counterpart and why it's so special. Uh, so my name is Devin O'Shaughnessy. Uh, I'm the Senior Director for Governance at Counterpart, which means I oversee our global portfolio of democracy and governance programs. Um, and I've been at Counterpart for about eight months now, so still a bit new, but I was very excited to join uh, because I've been in the democracy governance sector for 15 years, working with politicians and on elections, but Counterpart really works with civil society and puts civil society at the center of the work. Um, and the opportunity to work with sort of brave and inspiring activists from all corners of the globe um, has been just a real joy uh, in, in coming to Counterpart. Well, Devin, I'm so glad you found your way to Counterpart. We are obviously huge fans of Tech Change. Um, this year's conference theme at SID US is Power Shift. How do you at Counterpart relate to that theme? What comes to mind for you? Sure. I mean, there's certainly a few things. I mean, the, one of the big power shifts that we've been seeing for over a decade and is really uh, accelerated under um, administrator power is localization. Um, and that takes a number of forms. Certainly there's this move to shift power from the global north to the global south, of which localization is part of that. Um, and I mean, that will be a game change and is a game change in terms of subverting some of the power structures that exist in the world and um, really offering opportunities for um, civil society actors and politicians and political voices to uh, shape the destiny of their own countries in new ways. Um, but we also look at, at power shift sort of at a country level in terms of moving from governments and, and, and politicians and uh, corporations to really bringing power back to citizens and civil society. Um, this is a real challenge because those power structures are there for a reason. Yeah. Uh, people in power want to keep power. So helping citizens, particularly marginalized citizens, uh, young people, people who live outside of the capital, and giving them the sort of confidence and skills and helping them network is one of the, the true ways you can actually start to shift power. And through shifting power, then you can change you know, socioeconomic future for countries. No, that's fantastic. I was going to ask you about localization, but I feel like we've, we've tackled that here. Um, let's talk about innovation. What is Counterpart doing in terms of programming that you would consider to be truly innovative that you'd like to share with the folks watching? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, Counterpart is known for our civil society work. Uh, and so for decades, we've been at the forefront of institutional capacity building, organizational development, sub-granting. And these are still super important mechanisms that you know we, we lead the sector on. Um, but we're expanding the way we do that work in a few ways. One is, shifting uh, our partners' uh, thinking into using more what we call thinking and working politically approaches. Okay. So that can get quite, well, quite wonky, uh, but the, what it really means is helping people understand the, the political opportunities, uh, the levers, the leverage, um, that by engaging in certain aspects of the, the political system, political processes, how you can find and create windows of opportunity to drive substantive change. Um, and so by thinking in those ways, conducting political economy analysis, you know, that's one of the keys to, um, to innovation. And so we're sharing how different uh, civil society groups around the world are doing this. And that's one of the, the key advantages of having an international NGO. We have that global network. Um, we have the access to a whole range of of perspectives and, and um, expertise that we can then share with our partners and then they use it in their own context and transform it. So I think that's really exciting. Uh, certainly a powerful model and I always feel like Counterpart is pioneering some of these truly exciting um, models and approaches for the sector. So uh, let's bring it back to today. We're here at CIDUS. Uh, what themes and topics are you most excited about engaging with? Um, uh, as Devin, as counterpart, tell us where your head is. Well, a few things. I mean, part of what we're doing increasingly is using cross-sectoral approaches. So um, in, in line with the goal of helping democracy deliver, 
um, quite often there are stovepipes between what might be happening in education or climate change, environmental action. Um, and they aren't necessarily uh, sort of taking advantage of the opportunities to work with activists, to work grassroots sort of advocacy, uh, you know, mobilization. Um, they tend to be more technical. Um, I'd like to find and create more partnerships with groups that work in these other sectors to say, what can we bring by focusing on the politics, by focusing on the citizen participation side um, that will not only uh, sort of drive change in your sector, but make it more citizen focused. And actually the policies that get implemented are the ones that citizens want. And then when you do that, democracy is stronger because mm. people realize, oh, I, this, this system is working for me. I have a voice um, and you know, it, it can sort of be a, a, an, a powerful counterpoint to the sort of dictators that they can just get yeah. stuff done and like they'll just do this, that and the other. So, I mean, growing autocratization is a big problem. Yeah. And, and so helping democracy deliver is part of the solution. I love it. I love it. Well, um, Devin, we're so excited to have you here today, to have you all sponsoring the studio. I do want to ask if folks want to find out more about Counterpart and some of the great work that you're doing specifically with civil society and on democracy and governance, how do we find you? Well, uh, you can find our website, um, of course, is a good way to start, but then also reach out and we are on the, all the socials, obviously. Um, so just reach out to us um, and let's have a conversation. Right. That's the best way. All right. Well, we thank you again, Devin, for your time and, and for sharing with us this morning. Okay. All right. Okay, friends. We are here at the pop-up studio at the Sid US annual conference in Washington DC. My name is Nick Martin, CEO of Tech Change, and we are talking to conference participants about their conference journey, their work, uh, and the buzz here uh, in the Ronald Reagan building. Okay, so Brianna, I'm gonna start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do at APT. Yeah, so my name is Brianna Lopez. I work at Apps Associates. I've been there for about two years. Um, and I'm a business development specialist, so I do a lot of capture and proposal management. That's sort of my bread and butter. Okay, so we're here today at PowerShift CIDUS. What are some of the conference themes and sessions you're most excited about? I feel like a lot of the conference themes and sessions are very, very relevant. So one of the ones that I'm excited about, you know, the sessions about climate finance is really what I'm looking forward to. There's a session about AI, which is also really on the forefront of everyone's minds. Like everyone's thinking, how are we going to try to incorporate this into our work? What should we consider when we do that? Uh, so I really do feel like all of the sessions are very timely and at the forefront of what a lot of people are talking about today. All right, Brianna, I'm going to ask you, since you brought it up, how do you think AI is going to impact your work as a business development professional at APT? Any, anything come to mind? What are you thinking about? Oh, that's a really big question, Nick. I don't know if I can fully answer that question. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of things to consider if we want to integrate AI. Like I know one of the biggest like misconceptions or risk is like really understanding how we can use AI and then how we integrate that with proprietary information. So I know those are conversations that are happening for sure. And then obviously I think in every aspect of the proposal process there is a chance to facilitate AI even when it comes from like maybe graphics or if it's just like trying to bounce ideas off of each other. That's another thing. Of course we really value human thought and human authenticity. But I think that there's a there's a way that we can support and really use AI to really think of things that we may have not have thought of before. Great answer and an impressive thinking on the spot. So listen, we're so excited to have you here today. Enjoy your conference. Thank you so much for coming into the booth and chatting with us. All right, you take care. All right, friends, we're going to invite another conference participant into the pop up studio. Whoever is ready over here, come on up. Absolutely. Don't be shy. Uh, all right. Hello and welcome. Very good. Hi, I'm Jonathan Simonet. I'm from AIR, American Institutes for Research. Oh, fantastic. We are so thrilled to have you here today. So, um, Jonathan, I want to start just by asking if you can share a little bit about AIR with the folks who are watching who may not be familiar with it. Uh, excellent question. Thank you. Uh, American Institutes for Research, AIR. We've been for over 75 years conducting research, evaluation, and technical assistance in over 90 countries all over the world. Our mission is to create, develop, and implement evidence that leads to a more equitable world. Equity is at our heart, and that's something that's very important to us, drives us, and has us uh, uh, go out and do great things in the world. 
So Jonathan, I want to ask you a little bit more about your cash transfer work and some of the things that you are doing to, uh, especially to tackle humanitarian aid more effectively. How is localization playing into the cash transfer work for you all at AIR? So the cash transfer work is absolutely critical for humanitarian assistance. We have done some of the preeminent evaluations of the cash transfer work and we have found it to be very effective in uh, helping for humanitarian assistance. We've done these all over the world. We've done them in a number of different countries, uh, primarily in, uh, in, in Africa, in East Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and uh, the implications of this uh, are uh, tremendous. Uh, for uh, programming for USAID. Hopefully USAID is listening right now. Let's hope and we're in there, they're in their building right now too, so someone somewhere hears this. Um, let's talk about third-party evaluations. You all are known for research uh, and for evaluation on so many fronts. What is exciting to you about this third-party evaluation space uh, that you want to share with us? What's exciting to me right now is a lot of what we're working on is building capacity, but not your traditional building capacity. AIR right now has a P3 initiative, which is our partnership initiative working with universities in Africa to build the capability of researchers to conduct rigorous third-party evaluations. Yes, we do a ton of these evaluations. We do them all over the world. We do randomized controlled trials, mixed methods, and what have you. But what really excites us is the north-south collaboration. It's this idea so important. of thinking about how we can not build capacity, but build leadership in the world so that it's powerful. So that places can uh, and spaces can conduct their own evaluations, build their own evidence, make their own decision making without having you know researchers coming in and yeah. telling them how things need to be done. So, well, Jonathan, we're, we're so grateful to have you come by and talk to us in the studio today. If folks want to find out more about AIR, they can find your website, Absolutely. check your socials. Happy to uh, uh, engage with, with anyone at any time, but uh, thank you very much there. Really well, enjoy your conference and enjoy the day. All right, you take care. All right. And we have about, I heard, about a thousand people here. So we're going to welcome our, our next participant into the studio. Friend, I want you to tell us who you are and what uh, brings you out today. My name is Wally Mwabo. I represent Commodities International. Um, and what brings me out today is an opportunity to liaison with the industry, um, collect ideas from, the, from leading members of the community, um, and, and take things back to commodities to better, to better improve our development impact. There are a lot of folks watching who might be thinking, how do I get a job at Comonix? What was your pathway and how did you end up at the organization? Well, thank you for asking, sir. I actually started out as an intern at Comonix. You did? Yes, sir. Um, before I started my grad school program. Where did you go to grad school? I went to AU like everybody else here. <laughs> everybody else. I got a lot of AU grads here. They're all over the place. Absolutely. Um, so while I was in grad school, I also interned at Comonix. And then when I left grad school, I had made connections at Comonix. Um, and I applied for an entry-level position and I've been here ever since. Love it. Um, conference theme that you are most looking forward to today, do you have something on, on top of mind? Ooh, thank you for asking that question. Um, I believe the one I'm most excited for is Girls Lead. Um, it is one where we're talking about empowering females in Zambia um, and female-led groups in Zambia. I forget the profile, I apologize, but that's the one that I'm most excited for today. And also inclusive convening. Um, I believe that one is after the, the Girls Eat Zambia one, and we're going to be discussing how to infuse um, HCD principles into inclusive design and development. I love it. Well, those are fantastic topics. Excited to hear, and we thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us in the studio. Have a wonderful conference, friend. Okay. All right. Next up. Come on in, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch my hands because it's heavy holding all these things on set. Um, okay, you want to tell us a little bit about who you are and what brings you out today? Sure, my name is Stephanie Vasquez. I'm our director of global health at Bixel. Um, today, I'm just here to learn more about what's happening with localization, yeah. you know, digital development. Yeah, excited to be here. Stephanie, we are big Bixel fans at Tech Change. I know many folks across the sector here today appreciate the great work you do. Um, I wonder if you can tell me a little bit about what conference themes are exciting for you personally or maybe also for, for Bixel as an organization uh, based on the themes of PowerShift today. Yeah, I think what's really exciting is sort of digital development. You know, how are we bridging, bridging digital with international development outcomes? How are we making it easier for this power shift to happen through digital tools? Um, how are we supporting localization through digital means and using AI, ChatGPT, and other interesting tools to make work more efficient? I want to ask you that because I asked Brianna earlier, 
What do you think uh, will, will, how will AI impact your work at Bixel? Is it already starting to play a role? What are some of the things you're seeing maybe specific to health? Yeah, I think it's it's helping, and I think I, I've been playing around with it in terms of how you, you can synthesize information, right? You take documents and you ask it, hey, give me like a five sentence summary in terms of what does the main purpose of this document. So I think it's gonna be helpful in helping people to have um, an advisor next to them to answer hard questions and to help them make better decisions um, around programs. And I do want to ask, Bixel has been around for a while. How, how has the organization evolved as a small business in international development? It's, such, it's been a really interesting journey, as I recall. Yeah, definitely. I, I joined Bixel when we were 50. We're 250. Wow! Yeah, so it's been great to be part of the growth. Um, we started, you know, working our way through knowledge management, digital systems, expanded our work in monitoring, evaluation, and learning, and then looking to go more into sort of digital transformation, digital support. So we're, we're, we're excited to be kind of part of the larger growth that's also happening with the international uh, development. Just huge kudos on that journey. Big fan of everything that Carla and Mary Carmen and other colleagues have uh, contributed to the space. So hope you have a fantastic conference. Enjoy it, and thanks for stopping by our studio. All right, take care, bye-bye. All right, we are waiting for some more folks to come by here, and I think I was sharing, do we have anybody else ready to go? Um, uh, okay, well, we'll see if we can find them and I will uh, maybe share some, some words with the camera as we go. So we, yeah, we have about, I, I was talking to the organizers, about 1,000 people in person and something in the arena of 800 to 1,000 online. So. A lot bigger than last year. You can really feel the energy in the auditorium. Really, uh, really exciting to be here. And again, just a huge shout out to Counterpart uh, for sponsoring this space. It's been a great collaboration. And Tech Change, we're just trying to do more of this at conferences to help surface interesting humans and stories and, uh, and projects. All right, come on over. Are you ready? All right, it's great to meet you. Um, what's your name? And, and My name is Elsa. Okay, and Elsa, what brings you out today? Um, so I'm actually a part of Harmony Executive Advisors. We actually just joined SID US. And Congrats. So we're super excited just to learn about this annual conference, learn about all the organizations that are here, the impact that has already happened, and just like get more information. Yeah. That's great. So are there specific themes or sessions that you are most looking forward to? So I'm actually I have a big passion for just like underserved communities in general, which is all that, you know, SIDS US and all that and USAA does. But I'm just excited to learn about the initiatives that have been taking place when it comes to maternal health um, and children. But then also what's also happened within some of these uh, things for AIDS and HIV and things like that as well. How did you get into this work? I think people that are watching might be thinking, how do I, how do I find my way into a job like she's got? Uh, any advice for folks or maybe just share a little bit about your journey? Um, so I think for me, I, I actually, by trade, I'm a mental health therapist. You are? Okay. Yeah, and so um, I'm all people. An important job. I, much needed, right? I'm all people focused, but I think for me, in the face of being people focused one on one, you miss the systemic part of it, right? So going behind the scenes, what's happening to make the system the system, and doing that work to alleviate it. So right now, I'm actually on another side of uh, working with technology, actually as a project coordinator. You are right now. We're actually figuring out how do we help some of these organizations, like our NGOs, our um, foundations, to leverage what they're already doing so there's a lot of technology that goes into place now so how do we help the impact be larger so that we can reach more people have more security and things like that in the work that we're doing are you starting to see artificial intelligence as a technology impact your work in any way oh definitely like there's so much how? That's happening um i mean i think there's so many different like systems and technologies that are happening that we're not even aware of, right? And so companies are trying to kind of, they hear about this thing, they implement it, right? And what's happening is there's the, okay, we started this thing, we don't actually know how to use it, right? And so we're kind of coming in and figuring out how to use it best, how to make your work easier, and that's what AI is doing, right? So figuring out how to do that on, the, on their uh, systems and things like that. I love it. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming by, for chatting with us, and we wish you a marvelous conference. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. All right. Day. You as well. Take care. All right. We are ready with another participant as we go here. Um, I'm liking this AI question. I might weave that into a few more conversations. Uh, but, uh, yeah, things are buzzing here. Like I said, we have about 1,000 people in person, so that is incredible. Uh, and I'm looking at Chris, hoping we can get a few more folks to join us on camera for this session. Uh, 
And oh, we've got somebody coming. Fantastic. So uh, don't go anywhere. Okay. Awesome. And again, a big shout out to Counterpart and Sid US for indulging us in this cool studio model. Come on over. All right. All right, Leland, we got you. Okay, so um, I'm gonna have you stand right here, and uh, you can whatever you want to do with that. Um, but yeah, if we can just have you introduce yourself and share a bit about um, the work you do and, and what brings you out today. Sure. Hello, I'm Leland Kruvant, the president and CEO of Creative Associates International, here at the CDUS conference. Excited to see my colleagues and hear about the themes here today. Well, Creative is a mainstay, a big player in the international development scene, so we're so grateful to have you here with us today. For folks that may be less familiar with it, I don't know if you can give us the 30-second, um, all the things that Creative is doing, uh, we'll, we'll give you your best shot. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to talk about Creative, my favorite topic. Creative is a women-owned firm founded in 1977 by four enterprising women. They met in the Graduate School of uh, Education at AU and started this wonderful education company that is now also doing, it's called Communities in Transition. We do governance and stabilization and we do economic growth work around the world. You all do so much. Is there a particular theme or um, work work stream that you're most excited about today and, and maybe something that connects to uh, the Sid US power shift conference themes yeah all of it actually I mean creative was kind of a rebel before its time for sure they were the original power shifters there was obviously uh, a lot going on from the found foundation and founding of the company and so we believed in this theme early on it's sort of an extension of localization we've always believed in moving more of the authority and decision making to the countries where we work I mean to wit we have I think a majority of our chiefs of party are HCNs or regional TCNs we've always believed in doing this we're really happy to see aid investing in this and pushing the implementing partner community to do more of it. We've always believed in it and we feel challenged. Uh, we accept the challenge and we're going to excel in it. But we really think that today's theme is exceptionally timely and I'm really glad to see the speakers and the, and, and the big turnout today. Yeah, I can say as a, as a longtime partner and collaborator at Tech Change, just, just love the, the spirit and the ethos that Creative has brought to so many projects uh, that we've worked on with you, but across the sector. Really is truly an incredible exemplary form of leadership. So um, anything else you want to share with us? Any other uh, words of wisdom or uh, you know th things on your mind before we wrap? Well, first of all, thanks for your kind words on behalf of an excellent team of almost a thousand people around the world who work really hard, who believe in the development mission. Uh, thanks for the nice compliment. I just want to remind everybody that as implementing partners, we are full partners with AID. We believe in their mission, carrying out the best work. I recently returned from a trip to Ukraine and I saw how aid and the U.S.'s um, contributions there are so needed and so valued and we're just really privileged to be working with aid and with the American government, with the American people on the biggest themes. We're eyewitnesses to history, P proud to play our small role humbly, but with a lot of passion, we think we're going to do it well. Thank you. Well, Leland, we thank you for the work you do. We wish you a wonderful conference and thank you for spending a little bit of time with us in the studio. Take care. All right. All right, we're gonna we're going to have uh, another colleague come and join us in our live studio. Come on over, friends. Okay, great. All right, hello and welcome. How are you? How are you today? I am good. I'm good. How are you? Great. I'm great today. Feeling great. Can we have you come a little bit further over. Sure. Yeah, right here on that box. Okay, so I wanted you to introduce yourself to the folks watching. We have a large online audience here today. Um, tell us a bit about you and your work and what brings you out to the Sid US PowerShift Conference. Great. Namaste all. This is Suresh Tiwari. I'm from Oxford Policy Management. Actually, I'm from Kathmandu, Nepal. Oh, wow. Great to be here today. Did you come all the way from Kathmandu? To participate in this important... When did your flight get in? So that was on Saturday I came in. And so you're a little tired? Yeah, a little bit tired, but it's excited to be here and get connected with a lot of great souls here. Well, we're so thrilled to have you here. Uh, tell us a bit about your work and, and some things that you're particularly uh, passionate about. Yeah, this is like uh, Oxford Policy Management, where we work across the policy cycle from policy to planning to evidence generation, innovation, 
that ultimately contribute in reducing poverty, bringing more impact to the low middle income poor countries through the, you know, the partnership with the development partner, partners and the people, government, this is what we do. And then our work uh, around the policy and, and uh, bringing innovative solution to the global problem, emerging, uh, emerging problem. That is where we work and that's where our passion is. That's powerful. It, tell me, is there a particular conference theme that you are really excited about? Climate, localization, diversity and inclusion. What, what are you most excited about here today? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, we, we, as Oxford Policy Management, work through the locally established offices in Africa, Sub-Saharan, and, and Asia. So my uh, focus would be how would be more learning and sharing on how, how the locally led development go and sustain and what it gives a message to the people, needy area, and how it contributes to the, you know, really, uh, like like answering to the taxpayer money yeah. coming from developed world to the developing world. Well, I'm so excited to have you here today to uh, go deeper on this theme of localization and partnerships and uh, we wish you a wonderful conference and uh, and good luck in your important work, okay? Thank you so much. All Thank right, you friend. Before going, you know, many people are used to go from here and uh, go to Africa, Asia, Nepal. I'm coming from Nepal to see the people and see how the development priorities, for example, localization, climate and health, all are here. I'm excited to be here today. All right. Well, enjoy, friend. Uh, we thank you so much for your time and stopping by. Okay. All right. You take care. Okay. Fantastic. Amazing. All the way from Kathmandu. Uh, okay. Come on over. Hello. I'm doing great. How about you? Awesome, as always. All right. So, do you want to introduce yourself to the folks who are watching and tell us a bit about your work? Sure. I'm Ronnie Chiz. I am the director of international HR at University Research Company, and we are global health providers, partners with USAID. And um, you know, I always say you can do HR anywhere, but you can't, can't do HR somewhere where you make a difference in somebody's life across the world. So, That's a beautiful mission. I, I love hearing that. So, uh, are there particular conference themes that you're excited about coming out today, Sid U.S. Power Shift? You know, I this is my first time at the conference. First time. First time. And uh, I'm just excited to be a part of the energy and take in what I can and touch base with colleagues in the field and keep making a difference. Well, we, we wish you well on this first journey. Um, tell us about URC. Anything that people should know? Are you looking as an HR person? Are you looking to hire folks? Like, what what is uh, what are some things we should know about it? Well, we are always looking for talent, uh, especially for our implementation in the field. Uh, we just started a huge project uh, in Uganda, uh, Uganda Health Activity to continue our work there, that's awesome. Uh, and tomorrow we're hosting an event with CSIS uh, about mental health in Ukraine. So important. Yes, very important. I uh, can't imagine what those folks are experiencing. So whatever we can do to support them and help the U.S. government support them, we're, we're all about that. Well, Ronnie, listen, keep up the great work. It's so great to have you here today uh, with us at CIDUS, and we wish you a truly wonderful and dynamic conference. Thanks. All right? Thanks, all right, friend. Thanks so much. Uh, okay, I think we are trying to find one more person to join in this session. So just bear with us as we uh, see if we can get that person on. Any, she's coming back? Okay, uh, so let's see if we can get them. And maybe, Amanda, do you wanna say hi on camera while we're waiting? Look, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put people on. Amanda, do you wanna say a little bit about uh, who you are and, and where you work? Sure. My name is Amanda Jagus. I'm a program manager at TechChange, and I help work on events, virtual and hybrid delivery. You're doing such an amazing job here. I mean, I really do want to say I know this is a lot of work, and I was telling folks who are watching, we have a thousand people here in person and another thousand online. I think this is one of the biggest in-persons we've done, and online, that's a big turnout, too. That's great. Yeah. Certainly very exciting. What's been the hardest thing today that you've had to juggle? I think running in between the main stage productions and the pop-up, I think the pop-up is its own whole beast. I feel like we're TV producers some days and A little bit. project managers the next, so 
just juggling in between those things, but it's so much fun. You're doing great and just so excited to have, um, have you here working behind the scenes with us to make this a success. Great, thanks. It's so much fun and I hope everyone enjoys the pop-up studio. Cool. <laughs> All right, anybody else we have uh, before we wrap here? Okay, great. And as we're doing that, give us a, just a few seconds uh, and we will continue to bring folks over. Maybe we should roam a bit. We could roam. Okay, we're, we're going to roam a little bit later when we schedule, so that'll be kind of fun for those that are watching live. As we go around, it's a bit like the red carpet at the Oscars as we uh, find folks. Although I will say the outfits compared to the Oscars, not as good so I mean look we'll give some people some credit I don't want to I don't want to dig too hard but certainly this is not the Met Gala okay you want to come over you, come on over so you need to I'm gonna have you come stand here and uh, and introduce yourself do you want to say hi to the folks who are watching on camera yeah hi I'm Sunita Sharma I'm the director of Propel Health it's USAID funded global project and I'm also Vice President Health at Palladium and I'm so excited to be here meeting with our friends and everybody and I really liked the session this morning and I think Power Shift that's an excellent topic and also the emphasis on women empowerment and really preparing for the future like what we need to do differently and all those because we all are thinking how we can get better be more efficient and accelerate progress. I was going to ask you what you were excited about, but you already answered my question. You're ahead of the curve. Oh, okay, I got it, I got it. I like that, I like that. Well, listen, um, Vice President at Palladium on Health, that's a big job. Do you want to talk a little bit more about Palladium for folks that might not be familiar? And then anything, any other great details about your role specifically? Yeah, Palladium, we are like in, in 90 countries and we are 3,000 employees and we do a lot of work in international development but also really working with commercial private sector and we work in all different sectors so health economic growth agriculture and all of that food security climate change and all different aspects because we believe to find real solutions for poverty alleviation and economic growth you need to address problems in all different sectors and we do a lot of work in blended financing so as this morning we were discussing that how we really can enhance the impact of development by bringing private capital yeah. so really finding solutions beyond aid that is something we focus on and so it's really a lot going on at palladium and great group of people I've been with Palladium 23 years. 23 years? Yes. Yeah. All right, so Sunita, I have some more questions for you. Uh, what's the hardest thing about your job? What is the thing that keeps you up at night? You are a vice president of a major international development organization. What makes you really think, oh, this is a hard job? No, the, the best part, like what we have assets are people, right? So that's making sure that everyone is excited and then we create more opportunities for everyone i think that is something I always think about and we work on several usaid funded projects so be very responsive flexible adaptive and also we have large country-based teams so we really want to make sure they are engaged and all and it's part of my job you know solving problems and difficult problems I solve, better I become. So that's what... You love it. 23 years in, you are happy as ever doing this important work. Yes. Well, we thank you so much for coming by. We thank you for sharing your story with us, and we wish you a wonderful conference. Thank you. All right, take care. I'm going to switch sides as we're doing that, and I think we have another person. Come on in. I'm going to have you come right over here. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to have you introduce yourself and say a few words about what brings you out today. Okay, sure. I'm Kathleen O'Dell. I look after our international development practice with Deloitte Consulting. Really happy to be here. Uh, that's great. So Deloitte looms large, the international development practice in this space and for this conference for many years. You've done, done great work here. I do want to ask, uh, what conference themes are you most excited about? Are there particular sessions or topics that are top of mind for you all at Deloitte today? Sure. I mean, you know, there's some amazing trends going on, and you see it at the intersection, both the private sector and government agencies all around international development. So the things I'm looking for is I want to hear more about how AI is going to impact this. I mean, we're, you know, 
We don't know what this is going to look like, but certainly at Deloitte is top of mind for us, and so we want to be looking at that. I mean, climate issues, how we integrate development agencies, private sector, bring those goals together. I mean, certainly we're doing that at Deloitte, and so yeah. in our work as well. Since you brought up AI, how do you see it already impacting the work that you're doing in the international development practice at Deloitte? Are there any interesting conversations where it's coming up or, or parts of your work where it's already starting to have an impact? Yeah, I mean, I think what we're seeing right now is it's starting to bring real insights for us in ways that we, um, it may have been more painful to find those previously, but AI is really an enabler. So it's a, it's a with, it's an and, it's not in place of any of our analysis. Uh, we have a, a session we're doing on the virtual platform later this afternoon around um, the intersection of DEI and AI. We're really very interesting about that analysis. Yeah. yeah. Any teasers for that that you want to share with folks who might be thinking about what to what sessions to join today? Well, I mean, I just think you know. DEI is also so top of mind for all of our organizations and certainly in the development community as we think about locally led development and what that means. And so if you can bring AI to really supercharge that, I mean, that is very powerful. And the way we do that is we have to be able to measure things. We have to know what we're dealing with before we can make changes and, and, and move forward. And I think we're going to talk about that on our platform. I mean, certainly the measurement around DEI is critical. I mean, for us at Deloitte, we've released a transparency report, uh, just putting it all out there of our own facts and, and statistics, pay equity, what does our workforce look like, and what are our goals? I mean, you, ha you have to start by um, putting out the data. It must be a lot of work, though, at a big organization like Deloitte to kind of lead on this, but I also sense, because you have such a data-driven culture, that it's, it's kind of in your DNA to, to do this stuff and do it early. 100%. I mean, it's really at the heart of, we're a purpose-driven organization. I mean, really, it's at the heart of everything that we're doing. So, I, you know, it's, it's work. It's work for all of us to measure, to take the time to look at things, to be thoughtful and reflective, and also maybe to find some um, aspects of our organization that we want to improve, and we got to put it out there. But it's 100% it's, it's you know, top priority. Well, I'm so glad you stopped by the booth today and, and chatted a bit with us. We wish you a wonderful conference, and thank you for the important work that Deloitte is doing in the world. Thank All right, so take, care. take care. All right, great job. So I'm going to pull back up my notes here, and one sec. Do we have, do we have some more folks who are ready? All right, come on in. I'm going to have you step on this piece of black tape and just uh, introduce yourself to the folks who are watching and share a bit about uh, the work that you do. Yeah, absolutely. Armando Velasquez, I'm with Crowley. We're a logistics firm based down in Florida and we have a global presence uh, moving freight for the government and also commercial sector. And is this your first SID conference? Have you been coming for many years? This is my first SID conference. However, we've been members for a couple years now and we've attended some events and so I get to see some old faces. Uh, I say old relatively, but uh, you know what? This is a very warm environment. It is. always. Uh, that's what I love about it. It's so warm, people are friendly, and you meet them once, you feel like you know them very well. Good people, no doubt, and it is wonderful to see so many amazing humans here today. Uh, are there conference themes or topics that you're particularly excited about? So sustainability is absolutely one. So as a logistics firm, we're moving freight around the world, and we are really looking at how can we help the environment even more within the logistics sector. Yeah. So minimizing our carbon footprints, how can we look to next generation movement? So uh, say, for example, uh, electric tugboats, um, you know, reducing carbon footprints within the shipping industry. Yeah, that, that energizes. What's the hardest thing about doing logistics for the international development sector? Uh, what do you think? Every everything. We we don't we don't do anything easy, right? This is what thrives us, though. Say, let's let's take our ordinarily hard logistics and make them even harder in our sector because the places we work and the things we do are that much more complex. That's absolutely right. So when I'm not wearing something like this, uh, it's a hard hat, some boots, and being dropped in some uh, less than optimal places, but with people in need, and that's what really motivates a company like. It's powerful. Yeah, we want to be out there. And, and, and contributing. And so if the United States government can make an impact globally, and if we can do it through logistics, we, we believe logistics saves lives. And how do you get into this kind of work? I'm so curious, personal journey, like what, what led you down the logistics path? I'm a lifelong logistician for about 24 years now. Uh, out of the military, this is what I did. I enjoy being able to provide logistics in those really tough places. And so now, doing it for the international development sector is fantastic. 
Well, hey, thank you so much for stopping by. We appreciate your time and enjoy the rest of the conference today. Thank All right, you. friend, take care. All right, really interesting uh, to talk to so many people about their journeys. Oh my goodness, one of my favorite people, Ryan, come on in. All right, hello. All right, uh, Ryan, I want you to say hi to the folks who are watching and tell us the amazing, awesome uh, story of who you are and what you do. Well, hello everyone, uh, Ryan Ubuntu Olson here. I am the global, head, uh, global manager of diversity, equity, engagement, and inclusion at DAI, or for short, because we are in the development community acronyms. Uh, D-A-I-D-E-E-G, Global Manager. You say that five times fast. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm really excited to be here at SID with all of our amazing friends. This is, for me, more like a family reunion. A little bit. You know, and uh, we, I think we're all very passionate about the work that we do and really thinking about the impa ultimate impact that we're trying to have collectively. The video, did you all produce that video just now that we saw in? I'm not sure, potentially. You probably did, and there's amazing Kenyan women talking about the importance of localization and really being able to understand and care about people on the ground in local communities and what they're doing. And, Powerful. And really yeah. reminding us, grounding us all in the work that we're all here to do. And yeah. as much as it's about the numbers and getting, it, uh, getting here from A to B, that's really important, but caring. Yeah loving, yeah. uh, understanding people in all their diversity, yeah. and respecting people for who they are. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. I, I couldn't agree more, Ryan. So I want to ask you, DEI uh, is a big topic. What particularly around diversity and inclusion are you most excited about right now in May 2023? Maybe it relates to some of the themes today. Where, where's your Where's your mind at? All right. Well, don't 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 tell anybody this. Uh, but uh, I, I I got into the DNI. Um, yes, because I think we have a lot of room to grow in our sector to really help people feel a more, greater sense of belonging at work and in the work that we do. Um, and at the same time, I also believe in the opportunity that DEI presents to all, our entire industry, and that is adding layers of complexity uh, to understanding the world, that not everyone is uh, carbon copies of one another. In certain ways, we're all carbon. but. Uh, in, this, in essence, being able to really think about the pluralistic ways of how we bring ourselves into this world and into this work itself, and therefore the potential solutions that come out of uh, thinking and stepping outside of the box. You know what I mean? Like, uh, for example, I do a lot of LGBT work around the world, and one of the assets, I'm not just a minority or marginalized person down here trying to be like everyone else. From my lived experience as a queer person roaming this world, I have unique insights into the world. It's beautiful. That, uh, like breaking out of gender binaries or harmful gender norms that actually uh, prevent us from actually seeing potential solutions to the things that we're all trying to end, you know? So, think of, that's just one example. <laughs> There's so many. Beautiful and eloquent framing for today. So, you're excited about those sessions. And then, are you working group chair at SID, is that right? Oh, yes. Um, I'm also so honored to serve in my third year as a uh, the Inclusive Development Working Group Chair, uh, and we kind of coordinate thought leadership across the industry, really trying to help bring uh, thought leaders from all different organizations, and what I love about the internet, and the I hate to be positive about the pandemic, but you know, the thing that brought us all together, um, people from all over the world really sharing their ideas about how do we make this industry an inclusive space, but leverage the knowledge that's already been gained about reaching the last mile and people who are marginalized and getting to the people that need our work the most. All right, well, so Ryan, um, we thank you so much for taking time to chat with us. Check out all the cool work that Ryan is doing. I do want to let you have a book coming out too. Can you just very quickly just say the name of the book and tell people to go check it out? Yes, uh, my book, uh, my memoir is called Finding My Humanity and it'll be out this August and it uh, captures my experience of being a sullen youth potential suicidal in middle America to then traveling the world and working on human rights uh, advocacy uh, in this space. So. Amazing. I'm so excited to, to read this. I've already think ordered a pre-ordered a copy for us and the Tech Change colleagues. So we thank you so much, friend, for stopping by. Well, wait, I just now do one thing. The next person you're about to talk to is one of the coolest people. He's a fellow co-chair as well, Asit. Oh my God, you have to hear a story. Don't, okay, don't, you, I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> Bye. What a great, if only every guest would build the transition in like that. All right, Asad, come on in, my friend. 
Uh, another good friend of mine, Asit, do you want to say a bit uh, about who you are and, and uh, the work that you do for the folks who are watching? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Asit Nanavati. I'm the director at DevResults, which is a monitoring and evaluation software platform, uh, an adjunct professor at GW, and a SID co-chair at the uh, Digital Development Working Group. All right, uh, Asit, so today's conference, theme is power shift. Are there topics, subtopics, uh, and themes that you are most excited about? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm really interested in understanding and listening to how we're going to push the localization effort and really create collective impact from people around the world and how we're going to shift our focus uh, and really learn from those living all over the world. We often work in, um, obviously, a wide variety of places, uh, and there's experts all around, and uh, for us to really push that uh, initiative is important because it'll play a role uh, not only in policy but for me uh, and my interest around technology uh, and the functionality and features that we'll, we'll input in our system. All right, so I said I've been asking a few folks this question. How will AI or how is AI already impacting your work at DevResults? Are you all working with tools and AI uh, approaches in your monitoring and evaluation work? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting time. It's shifting very quickly. I think every day I'm, I'm Googling something on how to learn uh, what, the, you know, what the next is in AI. Uh, for me, and, and the thing that I'm really important and, and really passionate about is understanding the questions that we're asking AI. We need to understand the prompts that we're giving um, the AI generators and things like that. So that's where my focus is uh, from a technology standpoint as well as from uh, an educator standpoint is how are we asking, are we asking the right questions uh, in order to receive those, those outputs that they provide for us? It feels like it's going to be a whole new field of study. The prompt engineers Absolutely. that are already coming up the ranks. And I, I as, as a fellow professor, I'm also thinking a lot about how we use it to make better writing and make more thoughtful uh, essay and prose, but at the same time not replacing the creativity, ingenuity of human thought. Yep. So real, a real tricky dance yeah, to figure that out. Complex, and I think it's going to change, you know, near daily. Um, the other thing that you know everyone should really focus on is how do we use this ethically, and what are the parameters that we need to put into place uh, to ensure that we're using it for good, uh, and, and we're using it for the benefit of, of society. Well, Asit, we're so grateful to have you here today. Thank you for stopping by the studio, and we wish you a truly uh, marvelous conference. All right, friend. No, always a pleasure. All right, take care. Okay, uh, let's see how we're doing on uh, who's up next. I'm going to switch sides yet again. All right, step right up. Come on over. Okay, friend, do you want to, I'd uh, love to have you introduce yourself to the folks who are watching and tell us a bit about your work and who you are. Sure. Hi. Oh, sorry about that. Hi, my name is Jalen Moses. I am a senior consultant at Deloitte. I work in the international affairs space with uh, our inter international development or account, as well as Department of State. I am a scrum master. I work with developers. All oh, day. cool. Thank you. And I do application modernization and just digital transformations. And I really enjoy that work. Um, do you also have a passion for international development? How did how did you get here today at this conference, uh, Sid US? Sure. So, uh, long story short, I went to Howard University. Uh, I majored in international business and in min and minored in Mandarin and information systems. And I started working at Deloitte. I've been on main cool journey. Yeah, thank you. I've been mainly on tech projects, but I've always had a passion for international development, international affairs, diplomacy. Uh, I've spent time abroad and. Just that really energizes me, so that's why I'm here. Any advice for folks who are trying to figure out their next steps, maybe, and thinking, how do I get that job at Deloitte? What, what, any, any secrets to your path that you want to share? Well, we do have a booth, so if you're here, come up and step. Or if you're online, we have a virtual booth. We have people monitoring the booth the entire time. Yeah. I forgot to mention, I've also been coordinating uh, Deloitte's effort in this uh, for the for the. Fantastic. Thank you. So all of the booths, the. Uh, virtual panel that we'll have. Please stop and see that at 3 p.m. We What's have, the topic of that? It's on AI. Oh my gosh. Development and DEI. So can I ask you, how do you think AI will impact or is already impacting your work at Deloitte? Oh, ooh, that's a good question. So I use AI to help me with my very busy life. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we AI is huge at the firm and we'll, you'll see videos around uh, the, the conference about it. But it's... Uh, it, it's going to change a lot of things and specifically and we're going to talk more about it at the panel so please don't please stop by but you know there's a lot of research that goes into our work here and we're all on our toes about it so uh, 
Well, good. Well, we're so thrilled to have you here. Excited to uh, learn more about all the great work that Deloitte is doing on this front. Check out that session a little bit later, 3 p.m. you said. Uh, and if you are here, come by the booth and, uh, and, and also check out the great work that y'all do. Okay, thank you so much. It was great meeting you. Thank you. All right, take care. Okay, great. John, how are you? Fantastic. So um, we are uh, talking live to our thousand participants who are not here in person at the Ronald Reagan building. So I'd love to have you share a little bit about your work, who you are, and kind of what brings you out today. So I'm John Glover. I'm the executive director of Purdue's Applied Research Institute. Um, and I lead the global development and innovation division there. Oh. We're a really new setup, new way of accessing yeah. the university. It's like a one-stop shop for accessing all the cool. talent of Purdue um, in terms of faculty, staff, students, and affiliated companies. Are you a longtime Sid US uh, participant, conference goer, or is this new for you? This is not new for me. I'm a veteran of these. I actually serve on a Society for International Development's board. I'm an executive member there and do all the programs. So this is not my first time. Season vet. So any advice for folks who are uh, here for their first time or, or watching live uh, the virtual program? Embrace it. It is an amazing event. It is a really great way to bring together like all the different practitioners in international development, but use it as a really great forum for building those relationships so that we can make a meaningful difference in the world. So John, you've been to a lot of these. I'm curious if we could talk a bit about this year's conference theme, Power Shift. Are there topics, subtopics, themes that are really igniting you uh, as, as we come out and convene today that you want to share with folks who are watching? Absolutely. Well, I was on the, uh, on the conference committee, so I do... So you, you, you got to curate some of the ones you love the most. I did, um, but I'm really excited, first of all, about the topic. I think it's in a really critical topic at this point in time. Um, and I'm really excited about some of the programs, particularly around humanitarian assistance and also climate change. I think it's going to be really, those are two driving issues we're going to be facing. And convening this group to maybe come up with some ideas is going to be really important. Is there a, a really innovative project at Purdue that you are particularly passionate about that relates to some of these themes? Well, we have just started. We started 18 months ago, so we're very new. We're a startup. We're a nonprofit wrapped in the... So exciting, though. It is. So we're actually we're looking a lot to draw on the engineering capabilities, the polytech capabilities, and looking at a lot of digital cyber applications for international development. All right. Uh, well, we thank you so much for your time, and we hope you enjoy yet another great conference. Thank you for your hard work, John. We appreciate you. All right. Uh, that was great. Good to have a seasoned vet from the organizing committee come join. And uh, I think I'm going to put this down because my arms are getting tired. Okay. Uh, I think we have another person ready to go here. You coming on? All right. Welcome. Okay, Graham, welcome. Uh, we are live here with our virtual audience, and so we'd love to just ask you to share a bit about who you are yeah. and, and what brings you out today. Definitely. So my name is Graham Couturier. I'm the CEO of Equal Access International. Um, we're a sponsor of the event. We've been a longtime Sid member. Uh, delighted to be here. We got a whole contingent here. Got a booth and everything. So yeah, that's great. We're big Equal Access fans at Tech Change, uh, and so wonderful to have you here. Are there specific conference themes that really excite you this year that uh, you're thinking about? Top of mind, Equal Access and beyond. Definitely. You know, localization is big for us since we've started. We were founded in 2000. Um, climate change as, as well. Um, we're a big peace building organization as well. So yeah, we're very excited to be both in person and we got a, a bunch of folks uh, joining remotely. Hi colleagues. Uh, all right, so at Equal Access, what are one or two projects that you are really passionate about at this moment in time? What should folks who are watching know uh, that capture the spirit of your work? You're gonna make me play favorites here. <laughs> I, I know, it's so hard. For the, for the project directors, they're like, always got their pet, but the CEOs, it's a tough, to, no, it's a tough no, question. It's easy. Well, we've got a lot. So we've got a big program in Ivory Coast called Resilience for Peace, the USA pro five-year program, focusing on governance and CVE in nor northern border areas. It's a really good project for us. We've got a big program with um, UN Ops, so it's gonna be IOM and East Africa and Somalia. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, so that's, those are two kind of long-running projects. We've got a really cool pro program in Nigeria, northern Nigeria. Uh, funded by the DRL, State Department Bureau. Uh, that's focused on trauma healing and women, peace, and security. So yeah, we've got a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. And are, are you hiring? I've been asking a few folks, like, how, how does one get a job at Equal Access? Any, any pitch for those that might be watching that might be job searching? Absolutely. We're looking for a new practice area director. It's a great opportunity to kind of make your own way, get involved in BD programs, uh, and uh, kind of have, have a team backing you up. So yeah, we're, we're growing, and uh, yeah, definitely, we're definitely hiring.
Well, Graham, we thank you so much for stopping by. Appreciate it. Definitely, folks, check out Equal Access, and uh, hope you have a wonderful conference. Yeah, thanks so much for All right, you take care. Take All right, bye-bye. And uh, really a great mix of folks uh, coming by today. So uh, we'll just keep them coming here. Hi there. Welcome. You are live. We've got a virtual audience joining us. Uh, would love to just have you share a little bit about your work and what, uh, what brings you out to uh, this conference today. Hi, I'm Namrata. I'm actually a communications fellow at Collaborating for Resilience. Um, we address environmental governance and we're launching a few programs. Um, I think it's very interesting for me because I come from India and we have different partnerships in other countries as well. And I'm trying to understand how there's an overlap between different um, organizations and us. So it's been a pretty fruitful morning. Thanks. Are there themes that you're particularly excited about today? I think education and environment are um, my core areas, so I'm, I'm pretty like attracted to that. Any personal reasons behind those interests? Um, what, what drives you to education and environment? Um, so I've actually been an architect, a communication designer and an entrepreneur. Whoa, that's a lot of things. <laughs> since 2013. Um, and I've been collaborating with nonprofits across India. I've worked out of 18 states in India. So education is something that I've always been interested in and environment because the sustainability aspect of architecture comes from there. Yeah, what a great journey. Uh, and um, let's see, what else do I want to ask you? How does one get into this work? Like that seems like such a fascinating combination of, of skills. Um, so I have this creative worm inside and I always want to see how creativity can be you know implemented in nonprofits and their work so it's about getting volunteers involved it's about painting life lessons it's about uh, creating ecosystems so it's been interesting like that well we wish you a wonderful conference enjoy the day and uh, just excited for you to continue doing all the amazing work that you're doing in the world all right you take care